So you can hear it. Rowan, come back. It's wet. Yeah, it's Very wet. Lovely. So you can hear it on the roof. And you can see the way that the wind. Here it comes. Now this is June. That really is like a heavy April shower or even earlier. Well I know her. Oh, really? June, huh? And Rowan and I were about to go for a walk and a scoot on the scooter. Oh. Ah! Now you can see the flashes, look. The rain. Wow. What, darling? All right, I'm coming indoors now, then. Is that, come on, come on, Daddy? Yeah. All right, then, baby. Daddy, come on. All right. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the channel, indeed. It's an awful day here. In fact, it's the second awful rainy day. So, today is going to be about food. The main offerings, which is fish pie. So, there we be. Cooking bits. We are going to make fish pie. And there's several steps. The first one is to make some subtle flavourings to go in the milk in which we will poach the fish. So, I'm going to do that first and then when the milk is done I'll prepare the potato, fix the mash, then because you have to watch it we'll cook the fish. Fish pie, a la John, John's way of making fish pie. So off we go. Medium gas. Um, our, ours is marked one till nine, so I've put it on four, and I just want to bring the milk to the boil to, to, to get it to simmer. When it's done that, I'll turn it out and, and leave it to stand. And the idea of that is that it will draw the flavour out of those <clears throat> ingredients of onion, celery, and garlic. Not much. Not much, it's just to give a little flavour into the milk that we're going to poach the fish in. I'm still going to leave the fish here wrapped for a while. I'm going to clear the table uh, and I am going to prepare potatoes. So we'll have a quick whiz. <laughs> Water. Coffee machine has done its duty this morning. Thank you, coffee machine. Stock you. Now we're going to do something that um, Chefs claim you should never do. I'm going to leave the skins on the potato when I make the mash. We like to do that because it gives a nice rougher texture. It's a bit more rustic. Um, but for chefs, apparently it's a big no-no. I guess if you're paying lots of money for a meal in a restaurant, you don't want to have the the roughage of the potato. I 
as I say, we like it. It's not just laziness. But the other thing is, um, actually, if you do want a period potato, it's a very good idea uh, to cook it with the skin on, whole, not, not chopped. And then when it's cooked, you uh, just rinse it very quickly in cold water. And then you can just pull the skin off. Less wasteful and much easier than scraping it. Ducky, it's bye bye time, I'm afraid. Duck, duck, gone. Okay. In we go to the water. Carrot. Carrots um, often take a bit longer than potato to cook, so we rinse this up. Oops, Daisy. Rinse to wash this off. Again, I'm not going to peel it, but I am chopping it a hell of a lot smaller so that I make sure it's cooked through with the potato. We don't put additional cream or, or other things in our fish pie. Uh, when we get to make it, um, we will use the milk from poaching because that's got lots of lovely flavour in it. And we'll thicken that with a little bit of corn flour. You will see other recipes which use cream. Um, I shouldn't have it. I'm too bad already. <laughs> See you in well under a minute. There's the milk look. It's, um, I can't turn it because it'll fall out. <laughs> it's just under the boil. So I'm going to turn that gas out and I'm going to leave it now just to soak up the flavors. The potato has got about nine minutes left, so it's halfway through. And uh, I have prepared some cheese, 30% lighter mature cheddar. Again, <laughs> this very confused diet regime I have. <laughs> when I'm aware of it, I'm low fat. When I'm not aware of it, I eat what my taste buds tell me to eat which is a very bad strategy because that's how I got to be so big. Anyway, I'm not sure how many ounces or grams there are here, but that's the amount of cheese that I'll put in the mash. There's the fish, just standing ready. I'll put this away. I'll be moving the camera. Um, and when the potatoes are ready and the fish is ready, that's when we'll go. Okay, we're back again. Um, the potatoes, according to the timer, have another four minutes to run. Actually, they are ready. So we'll turn that gas out, put the lid back on. We'll leave them to stand for a bit. So we've had the milk standing with all those lovely ingredients to give it a nice scent. Oh, and it has. It's got that lovely soft onion in the nose. A bit like a really nice French onion soup, but nowhere near as strong with the onion. So I'm going to bring it back to the boil. question is how long would you want to be cooking the fish for? Uh, we like our fish to be, how can I express this? Fishy. Yeah, cooked, cooked through but still, uh, still, cre still creamy in the mouth. Um, so it's only just cooked through. Whereas uh, we've, we've yeah. talked about before, Risa and I have differences in the way we think about things being cooked. Um, Risa would prefer it to be cooked a lot further. 
The reason why I'm not going to do that immediately is that the fish actually gets cooked twice. So it's going to be cooked here and then we make the mash. In fact, we'll do that while it's poaching. Uh, and then you're going to, we're going to assemble the pie in this dish and the dish will then go into the oven um, to cook through together and to give a nice browning on the top. If you cook the fish too much at this stage, when you pull it out uh, after the second cooking, it will be like, oh, soggy cardboard in your mouth. <laughs> so, that's where we are. Anyway, I'll leave the camera running and I'll speed it up on edit um, so that uh, you're not staring at an empty bowl. Or if you are, it's in fast motion. <laughs> All right, while that's warming up, I'll go and empty these. The drained potatoes, they're nice and soft. I'm going to add some naughty ingredient, a bit of butter just to help it to get smooth. Not too much because I'm adding cheese as well. So it's the butter in there. Whee. The good old fashioned potato masher. <laughs> Thank you, but we've, we've, we've done it already, okay. A good old fashioned potato. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oops. The milk. So, fresh, fresh, fresh. Because I want to spread the mash on top of the fish mixture, I'm going to add some more milk and beat that in so that the mash is a lot softer. And while I'm doing that, look in the right drawer, John. While I'm doing that, I'll beat in the cheese. Very traditional things in our house. A good old wooden spoon. Really? You did fishing? We get television reports every now and then. <laughs> That's better. When you're making mash, it, it always intrigues me. A little milk makes a big, big difference. There we are. Yep. So that's now a very soft creamy potato but just with the texture of carrot. So. That's up. And while I'm doing that you can see now the milk is ready so we will carefully 
put the fish in now this is haddock oh, sorry this is haddock where am I actually called let's have a look what does it say oh pollock pollock is a strange fish when I was little nobody would ever buy pollock but um, as fish as su supply has changed serve our tastes and what we eat salmon favourite in our house and this is smoked haddock smoked haddock smoked fish is really nice on a fish pie there Just move that around. You see how quickly a fish cooks? This, this salmon has already got a much, much softer pink. And the fish cooks very, very fast in a wash like this. So basically, we want it to be like that all the way through. We compare that, you know, this piece of salmon. This is the salmon that's been in the milk. Oh, it's actually quite hot to touch. On this side it hasn't really. Um, so anyway. Lid on that to hold the heat. Gas off. And we'll let that... Okay, we're back again. Um, Family noise is off. <laughs> off stage, that is off camera. So this has just been standing. Oh, I probably left it a bit too long. See, the way through, but still soft. Mm. That's good. So. We lift up the fish. <laughs> Easier with a slotted spoon. <laughs> As I laid. As I lay the fish in here. I'm trying to spread out the pieces um, so that particularly the smoked fish is spread out. You don't want a corner with smoked fish in and nobody else get any. Now, I'm going to thicken this, so put the heat back on. This is corn flour. Um, traditionally, it would be butter and ordinary flour. That's going to be enough, I think. Oh, oh, oh. Beat it smooth. Corn flour won't form lumps unless you're very silly. And a traditional roux, of course, which is a, a knob of butter with plain flour mashed into it, will also go into a hot liquid and not form lumps.
Oops. Very hard to do. There we go. There's a fish. Probably easy for this. So there's the bash waiting. This is getting there. Yeah, it's beginning to thicken. Just beginning to thicken. It's a nice thick sauce. There's so many variations to this sauce. Um, some people would say you should have a bay leaf in from when you first poach the milk. You would have a bay leaf, and then when you cook the fish, you would take the bay leaf out. I'm not. I'm not so keen on that. Um, another option, which we use sometimes, would be to sprinkle a little dill. Uh, it's, uh, dill's very nice. The only trouble with dill is it's, well, I find it very, very easy to overdo it. Okay, so that's that. Now we get to the interesting part. Try and get that to be level. Now again, clever, more skillful chefs than me. <laughs> You've got very smooth mash. Would pipe it. Um, I use the spoon and knock method, which is this. So I'm just being gentle so it'll sit. Oh, I'm really looking forward to eating this. This is one of our family favourites. Now when I cook this, I'm going to put a tray underneath it, just in case it spills over so that it doesn't uh, spoil the... <laughs> make a mess in the oven. I'm very good at making a mess. But anyway, there we are. Fish pie ready for the oven. Um, we will cook this 200 degrees. Um, oh no, no, sorry. Uh, 180 because it's a fan oven, but somewhere 180, 200 degrees for about 20 minutes just to uh, lift some of the moisture out and to make the top go brown. You can put a little more cheese on the top if you like to give it a good Wow, surface. that looks nice. What let, do you think, darling? Let me hold it for you. Oh, it's done, darling.